porosity and permeability are related. Greater porosity means more space to flow, hence larger flow through a porous medium. But how are they related? In this video we will dis discuss the basic ideas how such a relation looks and we will see what happens if we will take a very really simple model. So first of all, uh, if the porosity is zero, you have no space to flow, so your permeability will certainly be zero. And like second, you expect that uh, if your porosity is increasing, so if you get more space, your permeability will be increasing as well. But how could such a relation look like? So for example, if you put phi here, k over there, the uh, simplest what could happen is of course a straight line. So uh, permeability increasing linearly with porosity, that could be an option. Or maybe some other function, so phi and then k over here, like that. Uh, some other increasing function. Or maybe uh, you need first some uh, non-zero porosity in order to get some, something flowing. So maybe you have first zero permeability. And then at a certain point, uh, uh, if you reach a certain threshold value of phi, you start to flowing. That could happen as well. So we have several options. Uh, well, let us look at a very oversimplified model. So what's the easiest we could do for a porous medium? Well, what we can take is we just take some cube uh, with length, uh, length L, L, L and L in three directions, so volume L cubed. Uh, say our porous medium just is one cylinder through the tube. Of course, not realistic at all, but it helps to get some idea. Uh, we, so we put a cylinder inside with radius R and length L. Now it's very easy to compute what our porosity would be because our, the volume of our empty cylinder, so the void space, is pi r squared times L. So that's the uh, void volume. Total volume is of course L cubed of our uh, full block. So permeability is the quotient of those two pi r squared over uh, L squared. And of course your L has to be sufficiently small. C cylinder has to fit in the cube of course. Now, that's our porosity, but what would we get as our permeability? And then we can figure out a way to compare those, just to get a rough idea. So, for our uh, permeability, we have a Darcy. Your Darcy velocity is uh, given by minus this permeability, that's what we want to know, over mu times your uh, pressure gradients. We will assume constant pressure gradients given by delta P over L and of course uh, water flows from high to low pressure so your gradients will be uh, a, a negative so if you uh, you can cancel this minus sign by uh, putting the absolute values over here so your Darcy velocity equals K over mu times absolute value delta P over L uh, then you notice Darcy velocity has some meaning it uh, actually gives your uh, volumetric flux, so your volumetric flux Q is equal to your Darcy velocity times this area over here. So that's your, uh, how your Darcy velocity is in fact defined. So your total volumetric flux is given by L squared times U Darcy. And now we know something more. We have derived uh, the Poisson law so we can compute the volumetric flux through a cylindrical tube. This volumetric flux Q was given by uh, delta P over 8 mu L uh, times pi times r to the power 4. That's what we saw in the previous video. Uh, now we can uh, put all of this together in order to uh, uh, express the volumetric flux Q uh, uh, and compare it to the permeability. So if we combine we have here our Q, this Q over here, and this Q over here, with the expression for the Darcy velocity substituted. Then we can solve for K. First of all, we see a lot drops out, so this delta P over L drops out, and the one over mu drops out. So what do we have left? Uh, in fact, here L squared times K, put the L squared to the other side, you get K is this expression over here. Now we want to express this in terms of the porosity, of which is uh, proportional to r squared over l squared. We can do so by 
putting the 1 over 8 in front and adding an L squared over pi, then we have to do it here as well. Uh, because what you have then is that over here we get a porosity squared. So we see our probability k uh, equals r squared over a 8 pi times porosity squared. So in our the very simplest model we could think of, we already see that we have nonlinear relationship between k and phi. In this case, k would be proportional to phi squared. Well, this seems to be a heavily oversimplified model, but it's actually not that bad. You could think of a porous medium as a sequence of all kinds of cylindrical tubes. Uh, those cylindrical tubes are basically similar to resistances in an electrical network. And uh, as you know from your electrical networks, you can uh, replace all your resistances in the network by one replacement resistance, uh, so by one effective tube. So if you use the analog uh, of a porous medium, you could actually do the same. If you think of your porous medium as a network of all kinds of cylindrical tubes, if you would replace it by one replacement tube, then indeed you would have such a kind of relationship. So actually, this relationship k proportional to phi squared uh, is not so unphysical at all.